allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning. Next, I have is the approval of last week's agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Or this week's agenda, this I'm sorry. Week's. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That was approval of last week's minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from last week. I will aye. abstain. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Abstain? Abstain. Aye. Motion carries. Next is the approval of claims for payment. I'll make a motion to approve the claims for payment for this week. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm at 10.01. I know my clock's off up there. So I'm going to move down to the recorder's monthly report. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, recorder's monthly report as provided. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, I have is item number eight, which is county treasurer regarding court ordered tax abatement. I just wanted to bring this to the table. It doesn't take any action or anything because it is a court order that makes us abate these taxes. Um, the city of Iowa Falls took a, a property um, through code section 657A10 abandonment um, property. Took that property. The court ordered us to abate all the taxes um, for that property. So I just wanted to bring that to the table and, and let you guys know that that abatement is happening. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, three more minutes for us. <laughs> three more minutes. Well, I will remind everybody to pay their taxes because they're coming due. So, but that's not three minutes worth. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Nope, you're fine. Um, next is item number nine, Joy. Yes. Well, all I want to do is run a page in the, in the plat book for the county with all the officers' names and phone numbers and it would be no cost to the county. Okay. And you asked us before and you had a form? Yes, I just need to get an autograph on an order form so that I can do that. This was two weeks ago when you asked us this and you were yeah. gonna double check on all the numbers and- I will do that. Ooh, that's fine print for me. <laughs> <laughs> 2017. It it's a one page ad, no charge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here. You want to? I, okay. I see the no charge. All right. And I see and the the signature line are. right there. I don't remember if we made a motion to before or not. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the purchase order at no cost to the county to publish the elected officials' office numbers along with the de uh, county departments in the Farm and Home Publishers plot book. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. If you want to wait, I will Sounds like a plan. get it to Nancy first. I'm still a minute away. Next, I have change of statuses in the sheriff's office. I have five of these. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the change of status for the hiring of Matthew Gary Evans as a correctional officer in the sheriff's office, um, permanent part-time, and that's effective as of September 13th, 2017, at 13.12 an hour. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
We have another change of status that I would make a motion to approve for the hiring of Thomas Daggett as transport officer for the sheriff's office at 1312 an hour. He's also permanent part-time help. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And I'd make a motion to approve the hiring of Jordan Ann Louise Houston as a communications specialist in the sheriff's office, permanent part-time at 1312 an hour. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'm going to abstain on this one. Okay. No more discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 One abstain. Motion carries. Then also make a motion to approve the change of status for Cassandra Milner. Um, the hiring of, of, let's see, oh, it's to rescind an offer as permanent part-time help um, effective September 13th at 1312 an hour. Is that correct, Dave? I didn't catch the first part. It's, it says under the reason for change is other, it says rescind offer. Cassandra Milner. Okay. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Which carries. And we have a change of status, the resignation of Marissa Spiker as a communications specialist in the Sheriff's Office, um, effective September 13th, and she was being paid thirteen twelve an hour. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm past my 10.05 deadline now, and I will go ahead and open the public hearing on the Animal Feeding Operation Construction Permit, Buckeye Finisher Farm, Section 25 of Buckeye Township. This is open to the public. Julie. Um, is, um like this application and all others, is there any mechanism which alerts um, neighbors within a, a one, two mile radius or whatever that these are going in, that this has been proposed? Is there any mechanism for neighbors to be informed? Yeah, we have, the neighbors by this one have been waived. They, they waived the rights for them to put it up. Oh, okay, so the neighbors are. Yeah, we have waivers. Oh, okay, Four. but uh, is the letter sent out to neighbors? I mean, in this They case, notify the, I always select would have notified the people around there when they did open. Do other, um, do other ones notify neighbors? Do other people are going to put them up? I mean, is it just Iowa Selector? Is it just Iowa Selector? Whoever it fills it? these out are responsible for it. Let people know. Oh. So, if they always do that? As far no, as I know. no, they don't. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to know. And um, I have another question. Um, when people put up hog lots, there's no taxation on those hogs. Um, like, well, Howard County had a resolution, um, and they said that. Um, for a 2,499 um, head finishing building, it generates $157 to secondary road funds. Um, is, are all counties kind of the same? I mean, if they put up one for 2,400 hogs, does that generate the same amount of money? Are these capitals? No, because each tax district is different in each county. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the, and how much does ours pay towards secondary It road? depends on the location of them, which, what township they're in, secondary school district road. they're in. Is it, is it, um, uh, what kind of dollar amount are we looking at, though? Are they covering <coughs> the costs of, of roads? No. Um, close? Not? I guess the easier question is, what can be taxed on the building? Just the building itself and the land. They're being a, they're being taxed at the same rate as all the other ground in that, you know, right around them in that taxing district. They're being taxed the same. All buildings are considered mm -hmm. agricultural, so they're 
the land underneath is agricultural. Right. So the value of the land really isn't as high as you would think it is. Except that um, the constant use of trucks and stuff on the road um, does. They're not any different than a farmer out farming his ground. He, Except they pay the same taxes. Far, oh, okay, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. The same but tax because rate they use else. the road so much more, that would... Well, you can't um, judge people based on how much they're going to use that road, though. Damage to the road would... Well, then you're talking about farmers during harvest time and during planting time, then. But harvest and planting are, you know, spring, fall. This would be constant. I'm just saying that um, Howard, Howard County... Um, they are, um, as, <coughs> I'll quote it, hence we as business managers of the county will deny all capital applications for our approval. Not that the application does not meet the required master matrix criteria, but because of the taxation shortfalls. The rapid expansion of capos in our county should not be a burden on the taxpayers. And I'm just... Well, that sounds like any county can do whatever they want to do. I mean, they can set well, their Well, we need to make sure that so. um, their use of the roads constantly hauling food and, and um, livestock is not a burden on the taxpayers of Hardy County. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. I have a question. How close is this to the nearest house. Does anybody know? 1,400 feet. And is it, and does this house belong to no. the owner? It belongs to somebody else. That's why they waived the opportunity um. to put the hog out there. And they have that right. And, and that's between them and the person who put up the building. And so, when these capos are built, is everybody supposed to send out this letter? If to they're within the falling of the so many feet of the hog building. And what is that? It varies. It depends on what the building's being used for. If it's a finishing unit, it can vary anywhere from uh, 18, about 1,875 feet up to 2,500 feet. So it depends on what they're going to be using it. Is how the DNR has it done. So. And what happens if you're not notified? Because we're stuck 1,650 feet and we never got a letter. It all depends on when they started the operation versus when you moved in. I don't know we if lived that was there way before my time. So. We, we purchased the property two and a half years prior and, and we, were there a year and a half before they put in the hog bill. Yeah. That you'll have to talk to the owner of that because I have no idea there. So I think I, is that a finishing unit north of you? Yeah. So it may not have been required any more than a thousand feet. If it's just a little one building. So well no they they measured and I'm pretty sure they're gonna put up another one. Then they might have to be a little bit more or It'll be up to the person to put it up. So, but that's how the DNR has got it registered. So. Can we, as a county, require all um, all people to inform their neighbors? Can Hardin County do an ordinance? I think that's that probably already in the I think law, that's isn't the, it? Yeah, the re requirements by the DNR. Can we that override the DNR? I'm or not talking about agree with the DNR or what? I guess. Could could we, we set an ordinance? Say that um, anyone who puts up a capo need, has to inform their neighbors. Can that be done on the, this county level? Is That'd what I'm be asking. That'd a legal matter, I suppose. I, I, believe, I believe it can be, but it's unenforceable. Yeah. And why would that be unenforceable? Because the DNR or the state does not require it, we can't require more than the state law. Okay. We can ask for it. Well, let's ask for it then. Let's just ask but we for can't, it. But we can't require it. Let's just ask for it then and expect um, a good response from um, Hardin County people. 
people who want to do this. Let's just ask for it and have expectations that people would have the decency to go ahead and do it. But I agree with Donna, you'd have to check with legal as before you do this. Yeah. Well, I, I, let's do it then. There's nothing wrong with people from Hardin County expecting um, people are going to put up capos to do that. It's neighborly. And we in Hardin County should be good neighbors. I don't think that's too um, high of an expectation, is it? What would your outcome be if all, every neighbor said no and it still goes? I guess <coughs> that would be on them, wouldn't it? They would, the one, they would be the ones taking the responsibility for not caring about informing their neighbors. That would just rest on them. It would tell us more about them. Okay, how far out do you want them to tell? What radius do you want them to tell and their that neighbors? That can be discussed. That so. is something that would need to be discussed. And I don't have all the answers right now, but it's, it could be a discussion to be had. Right? No, it's not. I think it's really talking about it, I guess. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. But Let's <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. It's, you know, getting the DNR to, to say something and everything, too. So. But I think we should just, it would be good if we could discuss it at a level. Thank you. Your turn. Oh, you're fine where you were. There's the. You want to be close for the microphone? It's oh, right up there. This is for you guys, anyways. <coughs> okay. Got some handouts again today. Oops. Thank you. start out. Uh, due to a miscommunication last week, I didn't get to attend last week's meeting. And, but I would like to thank the Board of Supervisors and Mr. Halverson, which is not here today, um, on the updating of the manure management plan. Under the original rules, had the plan been approved as written, the amount of phosphorus would not have been reduced if the P-rate plan had been invoked. And that's because the number in that table five that I talked about was higher than what it should have been. So if the P-rate plan had been invoked, then they, they would have been allowed to put the same amount of, of uh, manure <coughs> on the ground as the N-based plan. It, it's, but by taking all the entries out of that table, it's fixed. Um, as it stands now, updated parameters will be taken into account if those circumstances occur, and that's a good thing, and it does clear up uh, <coughs> any possible misunderstandings on that entry. Okay, now for today. A recent Farm Bureau spokesman article stated, water bodies reflect the condition of their watersheds. Another article about phosphorus suggested the decision to add more or less phosphorus could be affected by current soil levels of phosphorus. So you're going to put phosphorus on the ground that could be affected by how much is already there. Make sense? It sounds like there are a few other folks carrying the same message. I have three questions today, and that's according to the manure management plan, and that's page two that I handed out to the board supervisors. Uh, how much phosphorus will be applied to the soil? So, you want to answer that one? Uh, it'd be line eight. Yep. Anybody want to feel that one? So 199.6. Okay, so 199.6 pounds of phosphorus will be put on the ground. 
And question number two, how much phosphorus will be used by the corn crop and ultimately removed by the harvest? That would be line three. 62.9% pounds per acre. 62.9 pounds per acre. So we're going to put 199 pounds per acre on the ground. And when we harvest the crop, we're going to end up removing 62.9 pounds per acre. And then how much phosphorus was reported by the soil sample of these fields? So in other words, they have to go out and they, take, they have to take a soil sample of these fields and find out how much phosphorus is on the ground or in, in the soil. And unfortunately, the soil sample, I couldn't find it in the documents in the assessor's office. However, if you look on the last page, which is the P-index calculation, if you look uh, under the soil erosion STP column, you're going to find a number of 0 0.89, 0 0.89. So you have to go then to some charts written by the NRCS, the, the uh, Soil Conservation Service, and this translates to 46 ppm phosphorus, and I'm going to say this, it doesn't mean anything to anybody, using the Bray 1P or Melic-3 method. So we got 46 ppm of phosphorus that came up in the soil sample. The Iowa State University publication PM1688 classifies the amount of phosphorus in the soil as being very high. They have uh, five categories, very low, low, optimum, high, and very high. 46 ppm is really off the chart on the very high end. So we got 199 pounds of phosphorus going on the soil. The crop needs uh, 62 pounds of phosphorus. And they're putting it on the soil that's rated very high in phosphorus. Now, two weeks ago, go, Renee asked me, or she asked, I believe, the consultant, how much phosphorus how phosphorus application rate compared between commercial fertilizers and manure application. And the consensus, I'm pretty sure I heard at the time, was it's going to get it either way, whether we put commercial fertilizer on or if we put manure on the ground. It's going to get the phosphorus either way. Iowa State Publication PM1688 which, by the way, is cited in Iowa Administration Code, Chapter 65, recommends applied phosphorus to the soil based on soil tests and type of crop grown. For corn, if the soil tests very low, then 100 pounds of phosphorus per acre should be applied. In other words, if the soil test is at the very lowest level, they still only recommend 100 pounds of phosphorus be applied per acre. If low levels, then 75 pounds. If optimum levels, then 58 pounds. If high or very high levels of phosphorus are found in the soil, then no phosphorus should be added according to this recommendation. So in this case, with the manure application, the soil will get 199.6 pounds of phosphorus per acre. With commercial fertilizer, the recommended amount by Iowa State University PM1688 is zero pounds of phosphorus added to the soil. The soil will get it either way, no. But it's going to get a lot with this manure application. 60% of Iowa's soil has adequate phosphorus to grow corn. Hog manure is not a balanced fertilizer. This plan shows the nitrogen to phosphorus ratio is too low 
for corn production. Applying hog manure to satisfy the nitrogen needs of the crop results in over application of phosphorus. The answer is simple. Do a soil sample, apply the manure accordingly, and supplement the application with whatever is additionally needed. This brings balance more in line with Iowa State University recommendations. When I did a search on, on some of these issues, the, the P-index calculation, just hundreds of documents showed up about the P-index calculation. Now the P-index calculation is a very small little straight line formula. You fill in a few numbers and it comes up with an answer. And, and I know there's a little more behind it than that because you've got to get these numbers from somewhere. But it's a very simple, simple calculation. And I thought it's so strange that, that all these documents were written on the P-index calculation. And the P-index calculation is a just, is, is <coughs> according to the manure management plan, is a justification for applying phosphorus on soil that didn't need it. On corn that already has enough. The P-index calculation is about having an excess byproduct from an industry and not knowing what to do with it. They've got all this phosphorus from these hog buildings. They don't need it on the soil. The corn doesn't need it if the soil already has enough phosphorus. So they've got all this phosphorus and they don't know what to do with it. What it's about is spreading it on our fields so the Department of Natural Resources can classify it as non-point source pollution. So then we can all pretend we don't know where it came from when it ends up in our lakes, rivers, and streams. This one's for you. <laughs> Activism is an aggressive term. This is about defense. Defending the ability to enjoy the place where we live, where we play, and where we work. It's about defending quality of life. All of this has been crafted to be within the limits of the law. Beyond that, will you, Board of Supervisors, let us know what your thoughts are before you cast your vote today? Thank you. Any other comments? Any written comments? Hearing no more comments, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. Bob, to answer your question, it's not on the agenda to cast our vote today. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, anytime before you do. So we'll, we'll have that on next week's agenda. Would there be any comments anybody wants to make? Um, no, I want to study this and additionally. Okay. So thank you for the stuff. I was just doing a, a sum of calculations going out five years. I have all the supporting documents yep. for what I said today yep. right here. I trust you, Bob. And, well, no, but I mean, you can, you can refer to it. Okay. So yep. And I'll wait also. Okay, from there, I can go to utilities permits. And I I'll have make, one here. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve utility permit 9 13 17 A. Motion to approve Hardin County utility permit application by Midland Power Cooperative for the purpose of installing new overhead service to the flood station west and south of 26648 R Avenue. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor, just say aye. 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 Motion carries. I don't have anything from secondary roads. Um, the uh, road is open on Reese Park mm -hmm. or Honey Creek Road. Good. And then I can go to other business. 
I could say Jessica, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that Jessica can go first. So I completely agree with everything you said. Uh, but my question is, since I know we're like over applying and everything, but hogs are such a big part of our economy. And obviously, they have that byproduct, you know, New York. So what is your, what is your suggestion for like? Right now, there's enough ground in Hardin County to accept all of the hog being produced in Hardin County. So, if and, and, and if, if you go back in the old days, every farmer had hogs, and so that hog manure was spread out over all the ground, and it did not cause problems. And so, what we have in, in Hardin County are, are these pockets of high levels of manure in places where we don't have <coughs> So my suggestion would be to spread the manure we have over larger areas. And that, you know, the, they talk about the filter strips and, and the, the waterways and things like that, filtering this out and, and, uh, and removing some of these filters before it gets to the place and through the stream. So, by not having such a high concentration, it's spread out, then that's going to filter through a lot more grass, a lot more ditches uh, in, in places to, to end up cleaning up that phosphorus or using that phosphorus for, for vegetative matter. There's just an article in the Farm Bureau paper today, uh, they're talking about uh, increasing vegetation matter in the soil. And that stabilizes the soil and makes the soil more healthy. And so that's that's where I would get to. And, and you know, we could do a, a county balance really easy on this. Uh, we, we could say, hey, we got this much ground. Uh, there's probably enough soil samples out there to get a good cross-section of, of what the soil needs. And and then find out what what how much manure we can apply over that, that whole area. Uh, I, I did a quick calculation, and, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but we could actually double the number of hogs in Hardin County and not have a problem. So, so I, I know that's a, that's, a, that's a crazy thing to say, and I'll tell you why it's crazy, okay? Because as soon as people find out that number, and, and nobody tell, okay? <laughs> <laughs> As soon as people find out that number, it appears like, like the, the, the mindset today is let's take advantage of it. And, and, and I, I think that's sad. I think that's really sad. Uh, the, the typical uh, row crop farmer out there, they're not putting as much phosphorus on their own. They're not. And, uh, and, and you know, I, 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 I don't mean to go on and on. But you, you know this this phosphorus thing and, and the condition of Pine Lake is is just putting this big spotlight right on top of this thing called the phosphorus index. It's it's showing that the purpose of the phosphorus index was to protect the lakes, rivers, and streams. And 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 this this spotlight is right on top of the phosphorus index. It's not doing its job. I, I didn't mean to go on. Thank you. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? <laughs> I'm not prepared for this question. <laughs> I'll think about it like no later. Lance, Lance is going to tell us his thoughts before he votes, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you want to see? Um, Jessica. I need some clarification on the motion that was made for the. Um, the increases in salary because our office implemented it as it was voted on and approved and some extended that to include part-time help and that wasn't specifically addressed so I just want clarification that your intent was not to include part-time or that your intent was to include part-time in the 1% increases that were 
straight across the board, not the specific dollar mm -hmm. amounts. Um, my office implemented it, meaning we took it to understand it wasn't to apply to part-time, but we've been asked and challenged on that, so I just want clarification if I could. My intent was not to include the part-time, but with those part-time seasonal positions and stuff, we adjust those, seem to be every year already. Um, it probably would affect Dave more than anyone. Well, his people are mostly a union cover right. position, I think. So, right, Ones going forward, yeah, -union. correct. So. so the intent was not to, and that's how you read it? That's how we implemented yeah. it. Yeah. I just wanted to bring it up because it was asked, and there was some confusion, and I said, I will ask for clarification to make sure it's on record then because we implemented it as obviously you had intended. So. If a request is made to put that on, we can always put it on next week's agenda for the part-time help. formalize it. Our motion didn't include. You mean to formalize what we just clarified? Yeah. Or you it, if you'd like, <laughs> no, if you'd like to change it. It clarified they were not on there. Right. How many people does this involve? Um, I'm aware of one that questioned it. Um, you'd have to ask Kelly. It may have actually applied to like two or three people. Um, the easy way, easier way maybe to handle it would be to have a change of status. Would a change of status form? Well, or or we put it on the agenda to clarify. When you've done part-time increases, it's always been when you approve the salary listing. And so people who traditionally had $10 an hour, if their department head had spoken with you and said, I'd like to increase them to 10, 25 mm -hmm. an hour, it was included on the salary list and then approved yeah. in bulk. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that maybe that might be why they questioned it is because they weren't part of the in bulk right. that's typically done in June prior to July. And I, I said, I go, I'm pretty sure the intent was not to include you it's not being slighted, it's just saying it was not addressed, but we implemented it as it wasn't addressed, meaning it wasn't supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, so we didn't specify either I way, so I would say not. Personally, if you want my opinion, I think if the department head believes that his part-time person is worthy of an increase, he or she should bring it to the table individually mm -hmm. to you, since it wasn't addressed. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah, if it's only a few people, I think just you could do that. I really case think change of basis. state, I really change think of status. Probably only like three. Okay. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think just bring them to us individually and. Thank you. Any other business? Hearing none, I can ask for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Much carries. Aye.